Hola chicos y chicas, uh, espero que estéis bien. Aquí estoy para enseñaros uh, una clase sobre la diferencia entre ser y estar. Okay, so uh, this is going to be about learning the difference between the two um, verbs for to be in Spanish. We have just the one in English and in Spanish there are two. So you need to make sure that you know the uses of each um, when to use them. And then hopefully in part two, we'll go through exactly how you conjugate those verbs and use them um, in Spanish. But today we're just going to focus on making sure we know which one to use. Um, because once you've kind of sorted that out in your head, it's then much easier to make the sentence that you want. Okay, so first we're going to start with ser. Ser is um, used to describe the following things. So descriptions to describe somebody, for example, he is tall, the house is big. Occupation, so your job, um, I'm a student or I'm a teacher. Characteristics, so describing someone's like innate personality, the sort of person that they are. So he, he is kind or she is funny. Uh, time, so if you're telling the time, so at, um, it is four o'clock, you would always use ser for that. Origin, so where you're from, uh, your nationality, um, she is from Spain, for example, or he is from England. Relationships, so the relationship between people, we are friends, um, they are sisters, etc. Okay, so estar, the uses of estar are as follows. Um, position, so where an object is, um, the flower pot is on the table, for example. Location, uh, where something is located, so... Um, my house is in Bristol, or um, yeah, the location of an object, the student is in the class, uh, or not, as the case may be. Um, action, so if I'm doing something right now, so I'm talking or I'm sitting, you would use a stud for that. For those of you that know why that is, it's because we use the present continuous tense there, which is uh, to describe kind of actions that are happening right now. Condition of something, so if something is clean or dirty, uh, you would use estar to describe that um, because it can change its state. And um, emotion, so going back to the kind of personality thing, you would use ser to describe someone's um, innate personality. So for example, she is a happy person, but if you are feeling happy temporarily um, on a, any given day, you, you would use estar for the um, emotion there. Okay, so for example, she is bored or um, he is tired. Good. So as you can see, when we went through the meanings, come up with some mnemonics that will hopefully um, allow you to remember these a little bit better. So you've got a uh, doctor for ser, which is obviously description, occupation, characteristics, time, origin, relationships. And then for estar, you've got place. Okay, so position, location, action, condition, and emotion. So that's what they look like with their mnemonics. Now, mnemonics are really good ways of helping your brain to remember um, something in, in, in a kind of uh, easier way. And those two mnemonics, doctor and place, will um, pretty much serve you for most of the uses of ser and estar um, up to a certain level. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of practice. Okay, so for these sentences, all I, uh, if you've got a pen and paper, just to um, grab, grab that. And all I want you to do is pop down uh, which verb you think, if it's ser or estar, and then... Um, if you can, what reasoning behind that? So which one of the uh, doctor or place reasons you have um, you can put down for why uh, the sentence uses ser or would use estar, okay? So I'm just gonna show you the sentences. Um, I am from England. Okay, have a think about that one. My dog is under the table. I am working. It is four o'clock. She is a teacher. My house is in Bristol.
they are brothers it's actually strangely hard to read backwards <laughs> my son is tall i am at home and today we are happy Okay, so here are the answers to that activity. Hopefully you found it. If you use your doctor and your, um, your place, hopefully you found it quite uh, straightforward to work out which verb you would be using. So for number one then, um, I'm from England. This one would be ser um, because it's your origin, okay? Number two, my dog is under the table. This one you would use estar um, because it's the position of the dog. Uh, number three, I am working. For that one, you would also use estar because it's the action, it's what's happening now. Number four, it is four o'clock. For that one, you would use ser because it's the time. Uh, number five, she is a teacher. You would use ser for that one because it's occupation. Number six, my house is in Bristol. You would use estar for that one because it's the location of the house. Number seven, they are brothers. You would use ser for that one because it's a relationship. Number eight, my son is tall. You would use ser for that one because it's a description. Number nine, I am at home. You would use estar for that one because it's my location. And number 10, today we are happy. You would use estar for that one because it's an emotion. I hope that you got on okay with that. And in part two, we're going to actually learn those verbs and practice those verbs a little bit more, put them into some sentences. Vale, uh, cuidaos y adiós.